Cheers. It's the biggest road train you can drive in Australia. It's 53 metres long. He got big balls on him, have a look at it. We're going to uh, yeah, sort it out, it's trucking, and uh, we'll get on the road. So I just got off the phone with a good friend, Scott Taylor from STM. He asked me to drive one of his Kenworths on the ultimate road trip to Darwin. And I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. 5 a.m. we're leaving. We're gonna do a bit of a different trailer hookup. Uh, Dave was gonna be taking the STM A trailer black and white one with this trailer, so we did all the measurements for that. A Little bit of a change just for the camera crew. Uh, we wanted to have Scotty's black and white truck all as one set. So the pin position on this A trailer is a little bit different than the black and white truck. So uh, we're just gonna regroup. We're gonna uh, yeah, sort it out, it's trucking, and uh, we'll get on the road. The good thing is for the footage, yours is one truck now. We, the three of us leave. It's only 140 Ks. So who's coming, are they coming to grab your trailer? We'll, we'll hook this onto yours. Yep. Sam and Ryan, we'll leave. Yep. Sam and Ryan will go around the yard, grab Dale's prime mover, yep. hook it onto this. Sam will drive this to Gutton. We'll all regroup at Gutton. All right, pull out. How many layers does it take to fill this rig up? Uh, so this one holds about 1,200, and the other one's 2,000. The white truck, the black trucks, got smaller tanks. What takes everyone back a little bit is the effort that Scotty puts in. He'll tell you himself, he's a trucker by heart since he was a kid. As a young kid, I was, you know, hanging out in trucks, tying knots, doing chains. You know, I'd wake up in the middle of the night or whatever, and um, and he'd be heading out the door, and I'd beg him to take me, me with him. You know, ask him when, as I got older, I could move the truck around the yard and stuff like that. And then I learned to back semis and things like that. But you know, I was I was a kid, but it was fun. Some people choose to go, you know, and hang out in resorts and stuff like that. Well, this is my resort. You know, driving my truck going into Outback Australia or whatever, hanging out with mates or whatever, and um, and getting around, you know, in a pair of thongs or whatever, having a cold beer after, you know, tying chains and putting tarps on trucks and things like that. It's just, that's that's how I get my kicks. Uh, so this is the great shuffle because we're now 140 k's from, uh, from STM, from the workshop, and we can now go to 36 metres. So we can go to an A-class road train. So we can go from a B-double, which is 26 metres. So we're gonna now going to take the A out, have two A's behind Gary's, and, um, and I'm going to have two B's with a dolly on there and uh, let, the, let the fun begin. Here we go uh, from here, from Gatton, up the Toowoomba range, we turn right at Toowoomba and then we head out to Dolby and then Dolby and then from Dolby we go to Roma. So we've done 140 k's and today we're going to do about 750 k's. So yeah, there's a fair bit of fun to go today. Uh, we just pulled up at Morbin. Um, we're about 795 k's from the Gold Coast. Uh, first stop for the night. We spent a fair bit of time with the helicopter. Got some awesome footage. Uh, we've been messing around with trailers. So we started as two B-doubles, 
two singles. We've ended up with a mini road train, then a triple. And now we're just hooking up all four and uh, rolling out of here tomorrow morning. Scotty in the new 909. Uh, this will be no trailer for a while. And uh, Scotty's going to take all four of his trailers out. And uh, pretty exciting time. So we're just setting up before the sun goes down. Camp here for the night. Dinner in town. And then uh, we're out in the morning, bright and early. WBA, mate, there's a gig on the road, literally halfway across the road. He's got big balls on him, have a look at it. So I kind of looked and I said, what am I going to take to Darwin? So the Red Bull car, which is very recognisable here in Australia, that's a 2018 Bathurst winning car. Um, it's Lounsey's 100th win car. So we chucked the Lounsey car in. And then the old Diamond T or whatever, we thought we'd give it, we'd bring her along the old 42. People love that Texaco kind of themed truck. And then we went, well, we'd better load her up. So why not grab a Harley Davidson? And I've got to stick that on the back. That'll look pretty cool. And, and the Porsche race car, that'd be pretty cool to put in there. Most people put them in the backs of the trucks and, and I do that, don't get me wrong, but we thought it'd be fun to put it outside, and so we did that. So the Diamond T, which is uh, 1942, has a leak on the rear main oil seal, which is off the back of the motor. And because we've got it on an angle, which it doesn't usually like, and then the oil's leaking out the back of the motor out of a leather, a leather seal that's on the back of the motor, so we can't do anything about it apart from move it. We, we don't want to move it at the moment. So we're just gonna, it's come a little bit loose. So we'll, um, we'll just tighten the chains up and um, we'll get some of the oil off me and the truck and, uh, and, um, and we'll go again. We'll sort it out tomorrow. All right, so kind of we're in now at the Blue Hill Art Hotel, yeah. which I just found out off from friends of Dave and BA. It was the place that inspired the Walsing Matilda poem. Waiting on dinner, what's tomorrow? As you know, I like to be up early, um, and I'm really keen to get to Far Coast Station tomorrow. We'll, we're up at 4.30 or whatever, we'll leave here by 5. We're now in the dark, a bit of a risque from um, from an animal strike perspective. Um, a lot of kangaroos in the, in the early morning. Um, but we're going to make it. So, but my goal is to get the Barclay Station in the early afternoon. That's between one and two. Perfect. All right. So snapshot: 4:30 rise, five o'clock leave. Mount Isa cheese and bacon sandwich, fuel straight on the Barclay, pull up and wash. Absolutely. And in the pub by 4:30. But when it goes wrong and you've got 90 tonne rolling down the road, they don't pull up as quick as what cars do. The highway that you've got, you know, 53 metre trucks going at each other at 90 k's an hour, swaying like anything because of the poor road conditions, we've had a lot of rain and so forth. You've got to have your wits about yourself. To put it in perspective, if I move my steering wheel, say 15 degrees, that's not the full circle 360, 15 degrees isn't a lot, I could make the back trailer swing about a metre and a half offline. That means I've got about 250 either side of me and the guy coming at me has got 250 either side of him and 15 degrees on the wheel, you know, I can give a metre. That means we're, we're having an accident. And the sides of the roads, the verges, um, are quite soft. There's holes in there and things like that. So you can't drop a trailer off the side of the road or you steer off the, the side of the road or whatever because it may very well be you just can't get the thing back on the road. I'm not really your pie man, mate, but here in Mount Isa, beautiful Mount Isa, um, the option at the Coles Express 
is a pie. And that's it. A pie and a can of coke. Anyway, better than being hungry, isn't it? Whereabouts are we right now? What are you doing here? Um, so yeah, we're at Mount Isa and the lady in the service station was kind enough to let us use the fire hose. She said it's leaking anyway, so we could use it. I just thought it's a good opportunity to try and get rid of some of this dust because it's just, it gets into everything. It's unbelievable. So uh, we're probably a little bit ahead of schedule actually. So we, those early starts kind of help, no traffic. Um, we don't like going in the dark so much because animals strike really bad here in this part of, the, of Australia. But funnily enough, we got um, Lots of kangaroos and kind of lots of things, but not as many bugs. So you're not cleaning the windscreen. You go on the east coast of Australia, you're always cleaning the windscreen. Out here, there's not as many bugs. I don't know why, but they're, they're bigger bugs. They're kangaroos and pigs and bloody emus and lizards and snakes and all sorts of things. To have a, a can of beer unstrapped on the second trailer and it's still there. there go, they haven't done 300 k's. I think that's pretty good driving. <laughs> ready to hose on that other side. Hey, I reckon this is about the hardest I've seen you working on a trip. You're normally sitting down. Yeah, gotta get in there, you Getting in there, getting dirty, going. Yeah, I know, I am. I am. Just getting in there, mate. Great thing about having a black show truck driving to Darwin. Hey Scott, are you there? Yeah, guys, come in. Mate, I've just been pulled over. I've got a cop with a uh, flashing lights pulling me over on a bike. Nah, are you kidding or what? Yeah, I'm gonna have to pull over. You just keep going, punch through, and I'll, uh, I'll see what's going on. I'll catch up. Yeah, all right, let us know. Good luck. Copy that. <laughs> Scotty, what are you doing? Oh, I thought it'd be fun to be a cop. <laughs> cop for a day. We're going to Darwin, man. Let's go. Oh, okay. And you know, some of the stuff on the CB that you know, Garrett, is just ridiculous. You know, you're driving along five minutes in, he's saying stuff that I, I've never heard before from Gary. I was just like, it's just the same Gary. What would you do if you're a woman for a day? On another note, if you did live in America, would you vote for Donald Trump? Where are you going, mate? Jesus. Have you ever hit like a camel? Uh, I've never hit a camel, but I've seen a camel that's weak hit and I was in uh, like, Came across the bike as it just happened or whatever, he was pretty shook up because uh, uh, he was in a cab over truck and the, uh, and the uh, beast was looking down at him or whatever and it done that destroyed the truck and the truck had to be towed like poles for the radiator and everything broke the windscreen. And the final night, Adelaide River, it's easy to stop there for the night, get in there mid afternoon, relax have a beer, have some food, and then roll into Darwin, hour and 20 minutes, you'd straight down the hill, pull into the big BP survey that everyone unhooks, washes, and goes their separate ways to get their, everything sorted before we bumped into the track. Cheers. Cheers. Ah, uh, well Hi. we served. Yeah, we're here. Yep. We're here in Darwin. Um, but yeah, we've had a good go. It's 3,500 k's total trip. Um, so 3,400, you know, yeah, what do we average? We've averaged, you know, 750 k's a day, so 850 k's a day, so that's pretty good. It's easy because I enjoy it. So, you know, driving my truck is something that I really love. 
um, being with friends, you know, and, and doing stuff that's a bit different is really good. So it's, it's, not, it's not as if it's work, like driving a truck for a guy who does it every day is hard work. So I get to enjoy trucking because I don't do it every day. Yeah, is it hard? Yeah, it's hard. There's a lot of responsibility, um, but it's good fun for me. What number of fuel stop do you reckon this is? Um, this is fuel stop number seven. <laughs> so, you now what does that look like in terms of, um, of litres? I reckon we've gone through about uh, 3,000, three, three to 3,500 litres for each truck. That's $7,002 a litre. Um, that's $14,000 worth of fuel for this trip. Um, so, yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit more than what my motorbike uses. <laughs> when you take a, a good truck like a Kenworth and you start pulling it apart, putting it back together because you're trying to achieve a particular look, you can get situations like this going on where we made these tanks. And um, are they practical? No. Do they work? Yes. Um, does it look good? Shit, yeah. Oh, I've, got to, I've actually got to write down, is that many fuel pumps we use? <laughs> I've got to write down how many numbers, I can't remember all those. So here we are, we've cleaned the truck wash. We've, uh, the four of us have washed the truck. And now we'll go back and reassemble into two B-doubles. We've got to move some cars around, so uh, it's kind of really nice to be able to have all these boys here to give us a hand. Porsche. Porsche. Yeah, no worries, man. You're good to go. Thank you. Um, so we've arrived at Dale in the Hidden Valley, as they call it. Um, we just have to go in through security. We've been asked to go in earlier. So one of the unique things about Scotty is he's a race car driver, but he's also the truck driver. Very unique to have the driver drive the truck, get here, flick into race mode, and then drive the truck home. And I have the greatest respect, you know, for Gary's ability to think about, or oh, what's what's what does Scott really try want to achieve about this, and then who do I need to get engaged to be able to do that? So, like, I didn't know BA before he came on the trip. What a cool guy! Like, he's a trucky, and he's been there. And so we've asked him to drive a Ram with cameramen hanging out the back. Yeah, you know, I didn't know Caleb before, you know, before this trip or whatever. And now I've got this great, you know, guy who's buddy who's has capacity to do that. I can't ring up somebody, hey mate, can you get a helicopter and follow me for two days? And so that's what's really, really cool. But like, you know, behind the scenes or whatever, Gary and his great team um, will be working very hard to bring that fresh kind of approach to fun, um, which we all like, um, each and every day. to all those truckies on the road. Keep working hard, boys, or whatever. We rely upon you each and every day. Sleep tight. <laughs>